today we are going to talk about blocks and the way that children play with them and all of the different kinds of blocks there are out there on the market and just some of the things that you might be able to learn about your child as you watch them play with with blocks and also some ways that you might be able to kind of push along their development a little bit um, in different areas we'll talk about all the different ways that children learn as they play with blocks but first of all, before we begin, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Ann McKittrick. I'm with Nurtured Noggins, and my goal in these play school videos is to really help you understand what's going on developmentally with your child as you just play with them, as you go about your day, either you know going to school or staying at home, whatever it is that you do, what is it that your child is learning and how are they growing developmentally as you play with them throughout the day. And so that's what we're doing today with blocks. You might notice as you go shopping for blocks or you, you know, pull it up to search on Amazon or wherever you shop for toys, there are so many different kinds of blocks. You know, with infants, we have the, you know, the little soft blocks that they can touch and hold and squeeze. There's foam blocks, there's plastic blocks, wooden blocks, bristle blocks, Lego blocks, letter blocks, unit blocks, paper blocks, all these different kinds of blocks. So how do you know which ones you wanna buy or even invest in for your child? Because they can get kind of expensive and I wanna explain why that is. Let me just show you the blocks that I've got here. So I've got um, just your standard letter blocks. I've got two different sizes. Then I have these really neat cardboard blocks that you know you may recognize these from when you were a kid they used to be kind of printed like bricks now they're printed like wood but these are really neat blocks they're very lightweight and they don't make a ton of problem when they fall on the floor i've also got some duplos here a lot of different colors and sizes those are you know maybe for a little bit older child but has a little bit more fine motor strength and then I have some samples of unit blocks, unit wooden blocks. So that's just what I've got here to talk about with you today. So let's look at some of the developmental stages of block play, because your baby will begin to play with their blocks in the very first year of life. So there's several different areas of development that are enhanced by block play. First of all, there's math. And there are so many parts of math that we look at when we look at block play. First, we'll look at patterns that you can make. Let's say that, you know, your child has the blocks and they're just playing with them and they happen to be there like this. And you could just point out, hey, look, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow. They may not even notice or care, it depends on how old your child is. But this thing, yellow, pink, yellow, pink, yellow, for a preschooler, you might be able to ask the question, what comes next? And let them pick out the pink block that would come next. And so this is a pre-math skill that we are looking to develop with our preschoolers and it helps them to begin to understand things about numbers and the order of things. Some other math skills that we look at are the size relationships, geometry, equality and inequality, measuring things. You can like, you know, measure something and say that one is three Legos long, you can use it as a, a, a portion of measurement, fractions, if you get a little bit with a little bit older child and you're talking um, higher skills, even length and quantity and things like that. So a lot or a little, a few or very many, those would be some words that you could use with your toddler. Some of science concepts that might be taught with blocks might be balance. You know, if a child has a block like this, and they put a one like this on it, then this is balance. Of course, if you put it here, it's not gonna work. If you put it there, it's not gonna work. You have to put it just right for it to balance. And so that's a skill that takes a lot of time for a little kid to learn. Learning about gravity and where their body is in space. You know, this is a really big deal for children is just learning how to control where you put your hands, where you put your body in relationship to what you're playing with. And so blocks especially will help develop this skill because they're always knocking it over with their own body, unfortunately. And so it's just kind of part of learning how to play with blocks. Cognitively, there's lots of things that are happening, just spatial 
you know, the, the spatial concepts of where you put the blocks to make it look the way you want it. There's pretend play that happens with blocks, which is a cognitive skill. When you are pretending that you are doing something else with an object, that's cognitive. Problem solving, persistence, being flexible and inventive in your thinking, those are cognitive skills that are developed through block play. One of the things that I really love about children, actually not just children, all people, <laughs> is that we we develop in very um, predictable ways. And so even the way that a child plays with blocks, there are developmental stages of block play. So I just wanna just go over those really briefly, just so you can kind of figure out where your child might be. So stage one of block play is carrying them around. And this is what you will see with your toddler or your you know one to two years of age. Now, usually blocks will come with some sort of bucket or you might have a pail, even like a sandcastle pail or something that you have with your toys. They will love to put things inside the pail and just carry it around. And then of course they want to dump it all out and play with it and then put it back in, dump it, put it back in and dump it. That's what toddlers do. They love to do that. And that is stage one, is just carrying blocks around. In stage two of block play, this is when building begins. And children usually will make rows with their first stages of block play. And so they will just line the blocks up in a line. And the more sophisticated they get with their block play, the longer the line gets. I have seen children build a line of blocks that goes six feet. It just depends on how many blocks they've got. And so this is the first, first stage of block play is lining them up. And this is very repetitive. It's a, it's a nice pattern. It's the simplest pattern. And it's one that children can do real easily. So usually they'll go line them up on the floor like this or on the table. But then the next step is to line them up vertically. And of course, this is fun because that doesn't always work so nicely and it falls. And you know, stacking the blocks is a skill that will usually happen around in that second year of life. It actually is one of the things that is used as an evaluation um, on different types of assessments that are done on children. They'll give a baby sitting in a high chair some blocks and see if they will just naturally stack them. And usually they're looking for a stack of three. That's what they're looking for with these assessments. And so that's just kind of good to know. It's good to, to have those things available so your child can be experimenting with them. So the next stage of block play is called bridging. And bridging is when you take your blocks and you create a bridge. This is when children put the blocks together and then they put another block across to create a bridge. And so a simple bridge is one that looks like this. This actually isn't all that simple because I put it on the triangle blocks, but that's what I have in front of me. Um, here might be a simpler bridge would be to do it like this, to put two stacks with this block in between. This would probably be one that would be more apt for a younger child to do. And with time, these bridges will become much more complex. They might get taller, they might get you know wider apart, and they have to find a longer block. They just will become a part of a structure. And so usually what you will see children do is they'll do a bridge like this, then they'll stack two more and put a bridge, two more and put a bridge. And so it becomes a pretty cool little building that they've created. This complex way of incorporating bridges into their structures usually happens around age three. And so this is about what we would see at that time in their life. The next stage of block play is called enclosures. I worked in a teacher training program and so I would go to schools and observe and mentor ch uh, early childhood teachers as they were working with children. So I got to watch kids play in these settings all the time and I loved watching what they were doing and trying to figure it out developmentally where they were. Enclosures happens in that three to four year old range. This is when you take your blocks and you just make like a fence, kind of like you might see out in the country with cows inside. <laughs> and so you make an enclosure like this and usually there's some sort of pretend play associated with this type of block play. Usually there's something or somebody inside the enclosure, some sort of prop that has been given to the kids to play with with their blocks. Animals, people, cars, all of those kinds of things can be used. I can play for hours with my grandson with his magnetiles and we create 
all of these cool garages out of those tiles and we put all the cars inside and, and that is an enclosure play. He's in stage four. So the last stage of block play is complex structures. And this is what you will see as kids get older, like four to five years of age, even a child who's in early elementary school, you know, maybe six, seven years of age, they will create these humongous structures with their blocks that have a system to them. They might have pulleys, they might have ways to, you know, open doors or get inside or do all of these different things with their blocks. When children are in this stage of block play in this complex structures, they will spend a long time creating these really neat intricate systems of, of blocks that they've stacked up. At this point, it's really, really important to protect what they have created and they will often want to block off the room. We used to use um, that, you know, that yellow tape, that don't go past here tape in the, in the preschool classrooms to tell the other kids, don't come in here right now. We're gonna save this one for at least a few hours before it falls down. And so that's the last stage of block play is this complex structures. These videos, I am aiming these towards zero to three, so your kids will probably get to bridging and then, you know, they'll be older than that before they get to enclosures. But you're not, you never know, you might see your kid do that. So what about these blocks? You know, like how do you know which ones to buy? And you don't certainly need to have all of these different types of blocks. Well, first of all, you probably wanna have some soft blocks for your baby, some foam blocks. Those are really fun in the bathtub. The cardboard blocks are nice, but the thing that indicates quality on blocks is the fact that they are mathematically correct. For example, these blocks, these two triangles create a rectangle. In this set of blocks, there are rectangles that are exactly this size. Now I can take this block, and if I had another one with me here at the table, I could put it together, and it would be exactly the same size as this rectangle. So in unit blocks, which is what you see in schools and those kinds of places, all of the measures work. This is the intricacy of thinking that happens to develop these math skills that will help your child be successful when they get to school. If you can find a set of unit blocks, I remember when our kids were little, I was a garage sailor and I, would, I found once a whole set of unit blocks. They were well-worn, they had been played with for years, but they were unit blocks and they cost hundreds of dollars for a set and so I nabbed them and um, I actually had them here at the house for years. I actually gave them away um, not that long ago and so I don't have them here anymore. But those were, that was a great deal to find those used. And so I would suggest that, you know, you might keep your eyes open for something like that. There's lots of free trade on toys these days. And so maybe you'll get lucky. You might have a couple of questions. One is, uh, well, what do I do if my child cries when their structure falls down? You have to model how funny it is or how fun it is and how exciting it is when it falls down and help them build it back up. And so, of course, be empathic with their tears and, you know, say, oh my, my goodness, all that hard work and it just fell down. Let's see if we can do it again. You just kind of have to help them. This is a way for them to develop resilience and grit and reality because it's real world that things are gonna get destroyed once you've spent some time on them. And um, it's not a bad place to learn that in the safety of your home. Be on the lookout for some blocks. You know, when birthdays come around and somebody says, what do you want for your kid? Consider blocks. I'd like to suggest that if you got some really great blocks that would last you for many years and you would be able to see your child go through all of these stages of block play and enjoy doing that with them. So I hope that helps you understand just a little bit about this simple toy that we've all played with, but actually there is so much learning going on. I hope you have tons of fun with your kid and come check me out at Nurtured Noggins. Bye-bye.